for book one, proposition number 44 of Euclid's Elements, to a given straight line to apply in a given rectilineal angle, a parallelogram equal to a given triangle. So with this proposition, we're essentially given a triangle and some angle, and we need to construct a parallelogram on this line AB that's equal to this triangle in area and contains this angle D. So you can notice that this is fairly similar to proposition number 42. The only difference is that now we are given this length of line that has to be a part of the parallelogram. So to start this, we're actually going to use book one, proposition number 42, to construct a parallelogram equal to this triangle C and containing this angle D. And we're going to do it at this point B and along essentially a straight line, this line here, AB. So let's build that parallelogram. So we've just constructed this parallelogram, the parallelogram EFGB, and it's equal in area to triangle C. And this angle here, EBG, is equal to the angle that we were given, this angle D. And from here, let's extend this line FG as far as we wish, but we're going to extend it in a way so that we can construct a line through this point A parallel to the line GB. So let's actually draw that as well. And we can label this point here H. So first, we extended the line FG all the way to H, which we can do because of postulate number two. And then we constructed AH, which is parallel to BG. And that we can do because of book one, proposition number 31. So from here, let's also connect B and H. Because of postulate one, we can always connect two points with a line. And then from here, notice that FE and AH are parallel lines, and they're cut by this transversal FH. And we know due to book one, proposition number 29, if that you have two parallel lines, their interior angles on the same side, this angle and this angle here, these add up to two right angles. So let's write that down, that angle EFG plus angle AHG are equal to two right angles. And then also notice that this angle BHG is just a part of this bigger angle AHG. So we can write because of common notion number five that the whole is bigger than the part. So angle AHG is bigger than angle BHG. And basically, since AHG is bigger than BHG, that means that this angle here and this angle here would add up to less than two right angles. So let's write that, that angle BHG plus angle EFG add up to less than two right angles. And since these lines, BH and FE, their interior angles are adding up to less than two right angles, we know because of postulate number five that if we extend these lines, BH and FE, that they'll eventually meet. So let's actually extend these lines so that they'll meet so it looks like they'll meet somewhere up here, and we can label this point here as K. So basically, we have that FE and BH meet due to this postulate number five. And from here, let's just construct a line parallel to this line AE through this point K. So we're essentially constructing, let's call it KL, parallel to the line AB. 
and we can do this because of book one proposition number 31 so let's actually draw this line and it's parallel to AB or AE and then let's extend the lines GB and AH so that they meet this line and we can label this point here point M now notice that we have this big parallelogram FKHL and we have this diameter HK which essentially bisects it but we know because of book one proposition number 43 that the complements about the diameter are equal to each other so basically this parallelogram here and this parallelogram here these are both equal to each other so let's write that and that's due to book one proposition number 43 so we have that B A L M this parallelogram here is equal to the par parallelogram E F G B which is this parallelogram here and we also know that this angle here and this angle here are equal to each other since they're vertical angles so angle EBG is equal to this angle MBA and this is due to book one proposition number 15 which says that vertical angles are equal to each other so in essence we now can conclude because of common notion number one that since EBG is equal to this angle D that we started with and angle EBG is equal to angle MBA then we know that angle MBA is also equal to angle D and since this parallelogram BALM is equal to this parallelogram EFGB and EFGB is equal to this triangle that we started with then again due to common notion number one this parallelogram BALM is also equal to triangle C so in essence we have constructed this parallelogram here that contains the angle that we started with and it's equal in area to the triangle that we were given but it's also on this line AB that we started with so we've met all of the conditions for our construction so we can end with QEF